Welcome everyone to today's podcast, The Engineer Whisperer, Transition into a Director Role. Welcome everyone, so excited to have you here again. And today, my guest is Chris. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yes, thanks for coming on, having the courage to come and sit down with me. It's super cool. Well, as we start, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so um, I've been in the aerospace industry pretty much my whole life. I'm one of the original Top Gun kids. I saw Top Gun back in 1986 when I was a kid and fell in love with airplanes. And it's been all pretty much all airplanes ever since. Um, I went to the Air Force Academy and majored in aer aerospace engineering or aeronautical engineering. Um, and uh, after that, uh, went to pilot training, uh, be, be an Air Force pilot. Unfortunately, that was short lived uh, due to migraines. Uh, so that uh, ended that very quickly. So I started looking, trying to figure out how do I get into uh, some sort of engineering job, uh, ended up out of the Air Force um, and uh, could, actually couldn't land an engineering job right away. So I ended up spending a little bit of time as a financial advisor. Uh, there was a recruiter who reached out to me and uh, it was interesting. I learned a lot, especially from a sales standpoint, because that's essentially what that job is. And so a lot of good sales skills that I've learned, I put in my back pocket that I, I use from time to time. Uh, but then was finally able to get into Boeing. I uh, started in St. Louis with Boeing back in 2004, uh, working on the F-15 as an engineer. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. I love that airplane. That was so much fun. Um, and after a few years, I uh, got to my opportunity to finally transition into management. And uh, was on a program for about two years that was a competitive program. So we were in competition with another company trying, trying to win the follow-on activity and, and effort. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't. Um, there was a lot of reasons for that in, uh, in the program leadership and uh, how the program was structured, unfortunately. Um, but a lot of great lessons learned. Uh, as a first-level manager, first-time manager, um, there's... I learned so so incredibly much i actually keep a poster of that of that from that uh, program on my wall in my office um simply to remind myself all the lessons i've learned uh painfully and a lot of cases on that from that program that i i carry forward with me today um so after that program then i went over and spent a little bit of time on the f-18 program uh, which also was a lot of fun uh, and then I had a chance to transition out here to Seattle uh, to uh, where, I, where I live now uh, and work a little for a little while on the commercial aircraft side on, and the product development uh, side. And that was really interesting, working on new concepts and manufacturing techniques, uh, things like that, which is a, a whole new world for me as well. So I was a big learning curve and was learning a lot. Um, and then I ended up back over on, on the defense side, working on the P-8 program. Uh, which was, uh, that program was a lot of fun. The Navy customer was great. Uh, that airplane was a lot of fun. And the team at Boeing uh, on that program was was fantastic as well. Great work environment, great, great, just a lot of fun every single day. Um, and after being there for a number of years, I got an opportunity to go back to St. Louis and be chief of staff to the VPGM of Phantom Works, which is one of the major uh, business units under Boeing Defense. Um, and essentially in that role, I'm helping the VPGM run that business. When he's looking left at, uh, I, at some of the big items happening over there, I'm looking right at some of the smaller things that need to be taken care of, but he doesn't have the time to time to deal with. So got a lot of experience really helping him run the business, being his, um, his right-hand man. Um, and that was fantastic. I learned a lot, got to see a lot, got to meet a lot. Um, and uh, at the end of 2019, though, I was ready to move into a director position. I was a senior manager there, ready to move into a director position. Um, Boeing was in, obviously, at that time was uh, not a lot of opportunities because of everything going on with the company at that time. And I had a recruiter reach out to me and said, uh, hey, I've got this, uh, this opportunity with a company called Astronics. Um, they're in Kirkland, so not far from where you actually live in Seattle, because I was out there in an apartment while the family was still back here. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I said, well, tell, tell me more. And as I got to know more about it and then I was going through the interview process, I really liked the company, liked the culture, uh, liked the opportunities that it presented. And so I took that and that moved me into a director position. So I'm currently the director of customer program management for Cabin Electronics in uh, the Astronics company uh, here. Uh, and what we do is we make in-seat power. So if you've ever gotten on a plane, plugged in your phone, plugged in your yeah. iPad, 
those are our outlets. And then inside the seat are our, our power boxes that can take the aircraft power, condition it and convert it to what you need at the outlet to, to charge your device. Um, Finally, I have a person that I can thank for that. Yes. <laughs> so thank you, yes. Chris. You're please, welcome. Please send all, all my thank you to the <laughs> rest of the team because that's one of the coolest things that I have found. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's become one of those things uh, passengers just expect it now. So yes. uh, you find our, our outlets on airplanes all around the world, which makes makes this job a lot of fun, too, because I get to work with customers from all around the world, yeah. uh, all the global airlines. Uh, it's uh, really just makes it uh, just a lot of fun um, to, to have that type of type of influence and, and type of connections uh, with, with the job. So I've been I've been working there since uh, 2000, beginning of 2000. Um, and, uh, and that was my, uh, well, my director position there. Um, I know, I think one of the things uh, that people ask was, well, ha Hey, how was it, uh, transition, uh, you know, into a director position? Mm -hmm. Um, for me, I think because I was continually moving up at Boeing and then that last role being a chief of staff where I was working with directors and vice presidents all the time. Um, it was not uncommon to be on a call or, uh, in a room with, Leanne Corrette or Dennis Mullenberg, you know, CEO of Boeing Defense and CEO of Boeing, yeah. period. Um, and so you really spent a lot of time with that level of leadership. And I, you know, I get to watch and observe them. What kind of questions did they ask? What things did they poke on? What did they expect from a performance standpoint? How did they expect things to run? Really, you know, focus on from a business standpoint, from an operational standpoint, from a person standpoint. And so really just I've already was already seeing that I was already involved and engaged in that and, and immersed in it. So making the move to director from from that standpoint, really, I didn't see to be a, a, a huge change or a real real challenge. It seemed pretty easy to do. I think what the challenge was was I was changing companies, changing okay. products, changing customers. So I had all sorts of new people I had to meet, new processes I had to learn. Uh, so that that made it more challenging there because it had been a move into a director job at Boeing. There's most of that stuff I already knew. And so it would, yes. wouldn't have been as, as big a challenge as when I move over to Astronics and have all of those new things I have to go learn. Uh, so, and learn, tell learn me a bit, so tell but, me a little bit about that learning. How how did you start the learning? What, you know, because most people are like, well, how does a director learn? How did you learn, Chris? What, what was the first thing you tackled? What was the second? And what was your mindset as you were doing all that? Well, I think the, the key is a mindset of I'm here to learn. And uh, um, my my uh, my boss, who's the vice president of Cabin Electronics, he was he was really great. He said, you know, I don't expect you to be fully up to speed for probably about six months. Uh, so take your time and get up to speed. And, uh, you know, so for several months, take some of the pressure off of you're going to have to go make a bunch of you know, organizational business decisions. Of course, COVID hit during that time frame. And so it accelerated everything and I had to, yeah. um, but it took some of the initial pressure off. So what I did was I sat down with him and say, Hey, give me an overview of the business and, you know, top level of the products and, and then pulled up the org chart and who are the people that I'm going to be working with and talking to on a regular basis. And I circle all their names on, on the org chart. And then I start sending emails saying, oh, Hey, I just joined. Aaron told me to give you a call. Uh, because I'm, we're, you and I are going to be working together a lot. I want, when, when can we sit down? I want to pick your brain and learn what you do, what your team does, how we, how we work together. And just sat down with that, with that open mind of, you know, you tell, tell me how we work together. T teach me about you and your, your roles and your, your processes here. And just really did a lot of going around the company and having those sit downs, talking to all these different people. And then of course, naturally my team sit down with my team, go through that. Who are these people? What do they expect from me? What do they need from me? And, and you know, being being their uh, being their director, um, and then start identifying the customers as well because we're going to be working with the customers. So who are some of the key customers? And start trying to do introductions to them, um, and just so they get to know who I am and know that I'm there in that role. And I start to I start putting together names myself as well as as who some of these different people are. So it's a lot of just conversations and talking, which as an introvert can be challenging. It's exhausting. I get home at night and I was just ready to sit down and not do anything. <laughs> I'm curious about that question of who am I? So when, you know, with the customers and with your team, because as you were asking others of who they are, who they are and what did they do, maybe somebody also asked you, so tell me a little bit about like us. I asked you, tell me a little bit about Chris, about you. 
So um, how, how did you kind of assemble the elements of, of that answer? Um, you know, kind of like, you know, how much personal, how much, you know, business, how, how did you answer that question? Yeah, so a lot of times when they ask that, obviously they want to know what kind of leader am I? Am I going to be coming in and pounding on the table and you know, micromanaging? Um, starting when you're at the Air Force Academy, you spend four years learning about leadership and learning what works, what doesn't. You're, stud you're doing case studies on, on, type, on different types of leaders in different situations. And you, you come out of a place like that with the mindset of, this is interesting, I want to keep learning. So a lot of the reading I do is about these different types of leaders. And it's allowed me to kind of position my head around what type of leader am I really? And so I can come in and say, yeah, I'm a, I'm a collaborative leader. And one of the things I, li I like to tell people is that the most valuable person on my team is the one who's willing to walk into my office and tell me that I have my head up somewhere. Um, because I don't know everything and I make it very clear. I don't know everything. I know what I know. And you and I are probably going to have to have a conversation to figure out what is the right action and right, and right decisions to make. I'll make that decision. I'm not afraid to make a decision, but we need to talk. We want to make sure that we're making the right decisions with all the information available that we have at the time. Um, and so I, I share that because that's what I've learned who I am as, as a leader. And, and, uh, um, but on a personal level, um, I do I do share openly quite a bit about myself from a personal level. I know there's some who don't. They don't share anything. Uh, even on my team, I've got some people who share all sorts of personal stuff with me and others who don't share anything. I don't know anything about their personal lives. And that's just their, their, where they're at as, a, as an employee and, and uh, our relationship is. And I don't challenge that. I don't push that. But I'm more than happy to share, share mine because it helps them kind of see who I am as a person. You know, I talk about my kids and I talk about the things that I do outside of work. I'm a distance runner. Um, and it, build, it helps build some connections with other people because you find some of those similarities and you start to realize it's not just boss and employee. It's a couple people working together on, on this. So, um, and we, and we've got things that we can, we can latch onto that, uh, draw, draw connections. Mm -hmm. So sharing in order to build connection, was that something that then you learned as part of the leadership? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, tell us more, but tell us more about how you figured out your leadership or so-called leadership, leadership, as they say, leadership style, leadership mm -hmm. elements. Tell us more about your journey. Yeah, I think a lot of it is, um, well, you know, like I said, I do a lot of reading. I read about different types of leaders and I go, well, you know, how do I fit into that? You know, what, what do I have that's similar? What should I, what am I learning from this that I want to incorporate? Um, but I lead, a, I, I read books. I, I read Harvard Business Review a lot and they'll talk about leadership development. And a lot of it is about, you know, have, some of the articles will have different quizzes or questionnaires in there to, for you to learn about yourself. And so I'll, I'll always take those and, and what do I, what do I learn here? Um, at Boeing, some of the leadership courses that they had as well is they had different personality tests. Everybody knows about Myers-Briggs. Uh, they had one um, that they took, uh, gave us, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head right now, uh, that we took when I first went into management and learned a little bit about your leadership style, but also learned about how do you flex your leadership style to different personalities. So if I'm sitting down with, with somebody and I'm trying to work with them, how, what are the cues that I look for to say, that's this person's type of personality. So here's how I need to change myself in order to best interact with them and connect with them. Um, and uh, uh, another one that I did was a Harrison assessment. Mm -hmm. um, that was, uh, um, and there's a, that's a very deep in depth uh, a personality type assessment. And they brought some uh, folks in to actually sit down and go through it with us. And we spent a good part of, of, of a year, uh, essentially in that, in that training program, um, going through the different elements of that and what that means for, for us, what I am, what it means, you know, where I have weaknesses, where I have strengths so that I can be, be more aware of those types of things. So I'm always looking for those types of things. And even, uh, with my team, when I first joined at Astronics, we sat down and did a Myers-Briggs together as, as an entire team. Um, and the funny thing was here, we all were all these customer facing people. And there was only one person on my team that was an extrovert. Who knew, right? Who knew? Yeah. Well, actually, it didn't surprise any of us that that one person was, but it was kind of it was kind of like everyone kind of looked around and went, oh, OK. And, and so it helped us kind of you know, everyone kind of got a sense of, OK, it makes sense. I have to go out and be out there, but I have to manage my energy differently as an introvert. So when I for when I am in front of customers and, and so that I've got that the right energy levels and things like that. But knowing that at the end of the day, I just can't wait to get back to my hotel or to get home. 
and sit down and turn everything off and just zone out and go there. <laughs> yeah, called recharging in a way. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. It's a, there's a there's a limit of how much energy I can give out because in that activity, I don't receive energy back. So yeah, knowing Correct. what yeah. are the activities where you 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 give and you get. Yeah. It's yeah. very important. Yeah. And then created, a, I assume, uh, a really cool common language uh, among the team to to quickly say something like, you know, give feedback, tr uh, build trust, uh, collaborate, and to understand each other. Yes. Yep, definitely. And, and we're actually at a point where we've had a lot of turnover on the team over the last couple of years because people are retiring. Um, and and uh, with with COVID happening, some uh, people moving on to other other places and other roles, um, and so a lot of new people. So I'm actually later this year intending to to do that again with the team because it's a well. There's still some people there who were there the first time. Mm -hmm. There's quite a few new folks. So let's let's get a look at what the makeup of the team looks like now and have that conversation again. Yes, yes. Oh, well, I think these are so fun. Those conversations are so fun. Somebody always walks yeah. out with, wow, I. To even think about that. Yes, exactly. So those odd moments. <clears throat> well, Chris, what was, you mentioned challenging, what was something uh, surprising for you in your transition? <sighs> something surprising for me. Um, I think one of the things that was uh, surpri most surprising for me was different company cultures since I was changing companies. Well, I worked with a lot of customers and suppliers when I was at Boeing. I was now at a different company altogether, and it has a completely different company culture, um, and uh, one that I really like and appreciate. Um, but it was it it was surprising to me the the contrast between those, and it forced me to have to do th some things differently that I would normally that I always would do one way. I have to change my my approach and and approach it differently because it didn't fit the context of. Um, of the um, of the new culture as as well, um, and Can you so give us to, an example. Yeah, so uh, very big on work life balance at, at our company. We're at Boeing. Uh, you know, fifteen years ago, I can tell you they're not so much. There were times on Sunday mornings when I was chief of staff, I had executives calling me saying, "Hey, I need you to go make a PowerPoint chart for." Like, and I needed realize, in a few what, hours. Yeah, you realize right? what day and time it is, right? Um, uh, but um, and so even though you 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 talk about work life culture when you're there coming out of there you've just been conditioned that just you just work at, at all times and i still do some of that uh, but i try to be much more cognizant of it with other people and where are they at what are they doing they're on they're on pto right now i am purposely not going to send an email to this person or if i do i'm going to send it with a with a header is I'm not expecting you to read this or do anything with it until you get back from PTO. Just in the case that they do go look, make it very clear my expectation that no, I'm not expecting you to do anything right now. You're on PTO. Actually, go take PTO. Um, and uh, so it was changing some of those operations like that. Even uh, very very small things, but they're they're subtle, and and you can tell that uh, they have they have an impact on how the team operates. So. So wait, how did you find out about it? Did someone call you out that you? did send an email before or that you did work on Saturday or like it was just as, as part of a, a new manager coming into the company they did uh, HR did a uh, sit down a couple months in with uh, with the team and said hey what's we want to you know Chris isn't here in the room let's sit down we want to collect feedback and, and we'll provide him a summary anonymously so I couldn't see who said what mm -hmm. uh, but that was some of the pieces was hey when we're on PTO or when it's, you know, when we're, we're off work, we're off work. We're not going to, and I, and I started to realize, oh, wait, I am doing that, aren't I? And uh -huh. so they had this nice process set up with HR to, to go get some of that feedback early on and say, what's working well, what's not working well, what does he need to change? Mm -hmm. And there was some, some very good information in there that, that uh, opened my eyes to some things that I was doing because I'd been conditioned for 15 years to do things one way. That's not how they work over here. And so I had to, I had to take effort, put effort into changing my behaviors on those. Oh, how cool. How cool that HR does that and that the company mm -hmm. has that process to to truly support the new leaders if they want to grow, right? Because yes. there's always that we yep. choose if we want to stay with what we're conditioned with or we want to want to change. But that that is definitely, I mean, giving an opportunity to the leaders to make that transition and then mm -hmm. choose that growth. Um, 
and you know the other side is if they don't then the company is not a good fit so i mean i see both sides and of course the employees to give feedback and to help you grow um we so often dismiss that third group of people yes so i want to want to give them some credit <laughs> yes absolutely so and i was really appreciative of, of some of the feedback that i got that they felt comfortable putting it out to hr and trusting that it wasn't going to come back in, in a negative way to them that I would take it with the with as as what it was is constructive criticism to how to how can I be better to help the team um, perform? Yes, yes. You know, I think um employees, um, to those who are working with a leader, they have so much power to to grow their leader and then to grow their team. Uh, I think it's just that mindset shift that yes, I I got that. Mm -hmm. And being empowered. Oh, was there anything else that that surprised you? Because you said you did move to a new company, uh, a new culture, new people, new customers. Is there anything else? I think it, I think the one of the biggest challenges that came up was shortly after I got there uh, was uh, this whole pandemic thing happened around the world, yeah. um, and uh, that was uh, quite challenging. Um, but it actually created a lot of opportunities because airline industry slowed down so much at that point. It actually allowed me to kind of accelerate some of my my learning and development there at the company because suddenly we had a lot everyone had a lot more time on their hands so I could I could devote it to learning more about what was going on in the industry uh, who the customers were spend more time on the actual products and get a better sense of that and so it allowed me to to spend a little bit more time learning faster and more in depth than I would have otherwise so it actually worked out uh, uh, to a, to an advantage there from that so. Mm, okay that's yeah that's like leveraging as someone said don't don't let a good uh <laughs> good crisis go to waste yes yeah. yes yeah, yeah. Like, yeah what can i do yeah, yeah. Um, well i i was sitting there waiting to do wanting to do something and you know the deliveries have slowed down customers are pushing orders out because they're not flying their airplanes and like what do i do what do i do with this well let's take advantage of it yeah yeah it, it. it's almost like it was yeah the writing is on the wall, but do we lift up our heads and see it? So yes, yeah, uh, that's that's so cool to hear. Now, um, was there anything that that came easy in this transition for you? Um, I think a lot of just what what was the mindset of a of a director uh, and what I should be thinking about as as a director. Uh, was was relatively easy for me because, as I said, I've been moving up at Boeing. I was in that chief of staff role, working with directors, working with vice presidents, um, and seeing the questions that they ask and where their where their focus was was being spent. Um, you know, it's not they're not first level managers. They're not down there working on just making sure individual tasks are getting done. They're looking out and around is what's happening in the industry, what's happening in the environment, um, and uh, what are what are the strategic decisions we need to be making. Um, how are we thinking about our workforce as a as a whole, you know, strategically, not on an individual basis? And so I spent, was able to spend, uh, you know, from that being in that mindset for for quite a while at Boeing. Really, it was a pretty easy transition over to where I was like, okay, I, now I'm in a director. I really am thinking about the business, thinking about the strategy. How does it? How does what we are doing as a group fit into the uh, the operations of the company? The operations of our customers. How are we making? You know how. You know what do we see coming? What do we see changing? What do we need to make sure we don't mess up and keep exactly the same because that's just the way it's going to run. Um, and making sure I, you know, I I knew how to go ask a lot of those questions and really get to understand that and and see it from that perspective. So that was a pretty easy transition for me. Yeah, it's almost like you've been trained that you had the pre-training, right. yes. and then when you were to step in, like, okay, yeah, I'm almost. I've been living this for a while now, so now I'm going to, I'm going to do it myself. Pretty much, pretty much. Yes. So I'm curious now that you're at a new company. So, uh, cause you experienced it at Boeing and now at this new company and, and, you know, I'm sure somebody's thinking, Hmm, that would be really cool to do it at our company. Uh, I can see the benefits of just being a witness of that mindset of being around and in a meeting with other directors and higher level executives. Um, how would you, you know, get someone started if someone would ask, well, how, how could I introduce this um, into my company? 
where uh, I want to grow my own people mm-hmm. and I want to grow them in this mindset that you're talking about so that when they do get promoted and get to the role of a director, um, they step in with confidence and some already sets skills. I think a couple things that they can do are mentoring and delegation. Uh, and what I mean by that is you, you identify some of those people who are interested in making those moves up is what are you doing to give them skills and, and experiences beyond what their current role is that start to prep them and position them to here's here's how things happen at this level. Um, so, uh, for example, it's the you know, I'm doing a contract negotiation with a customer and, uh, you know, that's really kind of in my core to do so. But there's a couple, maybe some some of the folks on my team who could just sit in and observe and see what's going on. How you know how the, how does the contract negotiation happen? How do the conversations work? And then show them the decisions and work that's being done outside of the actual discussions. To how did I get to what I'm offering? What I'm willing to offer? What I'm willing to back up to? Uh, what are the thought processes that go into that? And give them the chance just to kind of see it. They're, they may not going to do that themselves at that role at that level, but get a chance to see it and start asking those questions and see it for real. Um, and then with delegation is there, when there are certain things that it's like, well, I should probably be going to do that, but you know, I have somebody over here I know could do a very good job at it. Let's give them the chance to go do that. Let's let, let them take on a, a particular task, a particular um, activity that would normally be under my role and with, you know, with guidance and, and mentoring and, and not just off on their own, but yeah, Given a chance to actually do some of that that work and and touch touch it, come up with solutions and say, here's what I've come up with, and then you know you're going to come back obviously as a director and go, well, that's really good. Here's some of the things you, I don't think you thought about. Here's some things that you you need to think about, or here's you know, it, yeah. but these are the really good pieces here. But you know, got to keep expanding. You know, got to keep looking even more and even bigger picture. Yeah. Um, and so I think that what I think those are a couple ways to really kind of help develop people. Uh, obviously, at Boeing, if your company is large enough, you can support like someone who's a chief of staff. Um, I think that is a great opportunity. Uh, smaller companies aren't necessarily going to be able to do that, uh, but that is also a great opportunity because essentially it's doing exactly what I just said, mentoring and, and delegation. Um, I was taking on roles uh, that uh, Mark, who was the VP GM, he didn't, didn't want to take on or he didn't have the time to take on. He'd say, Chris, I need you to go go take care of that. And so I would go do the work and, and represent him. Um, and uh, have to have to make decisions from from his level um, on his behalf, and uh, so it really was that delegation and opportunity to jump in there, get get some experience with it. Of course, he didn't give me things that were high risk, that were multi billion dollar contracts that we were trying to win. Now he, I wasn't touching those; he was he was on those. But other smaller items uh, that that would be going on uh, would need a decision or need somebody to guide and mentor it. Um, he would give me the opportunity to to step in and 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 demonstrate leadership and gain leadership and at, at that level yeah. uh, by taking those on. So I think those are, those are little ways that you can do that by through that delegation and the mentoring. I think those are getting, letting people get their hands on something is the best way to learn something. Yeah. I call those the high trust and low risk. Yes. Opportunities where yep. you really lean into the trust of trusting someone. And then with that trust, you almost pull them up of, when they don't believe that they can do something, but then they hear from a leader that, no, you can, I trust you, you can. They yep. they pretty much step up and they increase their capabilities. Yep. It's it's fascinating and amazing. So, And that's one of the things that uh, you, you do at the Air Force Academy is as, as a freshman, you don't have, you, you're barely in charge of yourself. Uh, but as, by the time you're a senior, you're you're running this, running everything. You're a flight commander, you're a squadron commander, and you're you're the one in charge uh, making the day to day decisions on on how things are operating. And it's a it's a build and develop and, and create those opportunities. But it's as you said, generally it's low risk items. So if I, I make a decision and then realize, oops, that was a really bad decision. Low risk, not not much nothing really bad happened, but I learned something very valuable that I will no longer make, I won't make that mistake a second time. So, but I, I learned it through experience and that's the best way. Yes. Yes. And I love that. Don't make the same mistake twice. Yes. <laughs> yep. Learn to make, learn to make a new one. Yes. Yes. Go learn to make a new one. <laughs>
<laughs> well, as we're getting close to our conversation, for someone to ask, what transition are you going through currently? Yeah, so I'm actually, because uh, I wasn't busy enough with my uh, director role, I'm actually becoming a business owner uh, uh, right now. Um, I've always been interested in owning my own business. Uh, and uh, so last year I signed on with a franchise. Uh, so I'm going to be opening a, a business here in the next month or two. I'm getting really close to, to being being open um, and uh, signed on. It's a company called Ellie Mental Health. I'm wearing the sweatshirt here um, and uh, providing outpatient mental health services. So an industry very different than what I've been in my whole career. Uh, so I'm, once again, I'm, I'm learning a lot, but also uh, being a business owner, I'm learning all the things that happen behind the scenes that you don't see and you don't realize as an employee of a company, you know, payroll and mm -hmm. employee and employer taxes. How is that managed? What, what in the world do you do there? Leases on a, on a commercial property. Oh, my. Um, you know, it's all sorts of things you just don't think about when you're the, when you're an employee of a company. And now all of a sudden I'm thrown into where, uh, or I've jumped into where um, I'm having to go learn all these different pieces and bring it together. But I really like the opportunity because, you know, I'll be, um, I'm going to be working for myself on this one. I'm, I'm the owner, even though it's a franchise, I'm, I'm the owner of this business. And I make the decisions about, I'm ultimately responsible for decisions on what we're going to do or not do. And, and success of that business ties directly to what I do. You know, whether you're an engineer or a director, you, you make decisions, you have good successes with your business every day. And then you go look at the overall company results, financial results, and you, and you kind of scratch your head and go, where, where is where is my good performance in here? I, I'm, I don't know that I can see it and how much I really drove any of that. When you own your own business, it, it's, it's very transparent. If I'm making bad decisions, the business is going to fail. If I'm making good decisions, it's going to be thriving and growing. Um, and so it's, I really get that direct feedback and it really is truly on me, uh, how good or how bad the, the business ends up running. So Chris, what is a challenging mind, mindset shift that you are, um, moving into as you're opening this new business? It's, uh, it's once again, it's a, it's a learning opportunity. There's a whole lot I've, I've got to go learn. Uh, but it's the, um, what fuels the learning though? What, what fuels the that I want to learn? Uh, well, it's just, you know, like I said, I've always, I've always wanted to own my own business and, and have that responsibility. I'm, I'm the kind of person I like to have responsibility. Um, I, you know, it's one of the things I learned in my Harrison assessment when I took that back at Boeing in, in uh, one of the leadership courses is I scored very high on is willing to step up and take responsibility and make decisions. Um, I was almost off the charts on that one. And so it's just kind of my, my personal mindset. Um, and, uh, so I, you know, it's stepping up and, and wanting to take that responsibility to see something come through to success and show that and prove to myself that, hey, I can do something like this um, and uh, and have that uh, have that direct responsibility for for the success. Um, well, there it is. I want to prove to myself that the feeling that I always had that I can do this, I want yep. to do this, that now I'm going to. Um, prove it. I'm going to I'm going to jump out there and I'm going to go. I'm going to go do it and show that yeah. it can be done. Yes, I'm going to verify this feeling and thought that I always had. Uh, it's almost like, you know, one of the things on a bucket list. I want to do this before I die. So, yes, it's, yeah. it's, uh, I'm, I know I'm capable. Uh, now I want to, I want to show it to myself. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. that's, that yeah. sounds super fantastic. I, yeah. I know I've done some of those in my, in, in my life already. And those are just so energizing. Sorry, was there something else? Oh, I was going to say, and it's one of the, one of the things you learn too in this is uh, you really learn about networks um, and building the team around you who are experts at things. Like I, I mentioned leases, uh, mentioned taxes, payroll. I don't know all those things. I, you know, I have to have a good team and go hire a good team to be around me and help manage those things and then trust them to be able to do it. So when you get to that type of level where you're at the top and you're running the business, it's really about making sure, as Jim Collins said, having the right people on the bus. And, and so it's, that's a, that's a big piece of it. You really, you really learn that and, and, uh, yeah. um, and trying to figure out how do you go find those right people? That's, that's a challenge. That is very much a challenge. It sounds like for you, that's, that's 
with just enough spice and just enough challenging challenge to 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 keep you motivated to to go and do it that it, it yes. brings you energy yes I have, um, I have fun every day doing it whenever i'm doing something gets one one more thing done that's one step closer to getting doors open uh, on the business it just feels great yes i i can sense that well i wish you lots of lots of success thank you with it and let's you know keep in touch keep me posted of, of what you do and where you're going absolutely absolutely will well chris um i want to give you the mic back close this out well what do you want to leave us with today on this podcast um i think what I'd leave with is, uh, you know, making sure that uh, as you're transitioning from any role, from as you're 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 moving up, every, every role gets bigger picture, um, and uh, you know, so constantly trying to learn. Um, there's a lot of people around you, a lot of people who've been through these types of transitions before, been into these types of roles before. Spend the time, reach out to them, talk to them, read things that they've written, whether they've written articles or books. Get out there and, and learn and. Don't be afraid to jump in and give, give it a shot. You're going to make some mistakes in it, and that's fine. That's how you learn. Uh, but uh, jump out there and just constantly be in that learning mindset that uh, there's there's always there's always something new to learn every single day. I love that. Well, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for being an awesome guest. Thank you for I mean, having me. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, me too. I appreciate it. Thank you.